America's theme last night in the State of the Union was the WTF, you know, winning the future. And I thought, okay, that acronym, spot on. There were a lot of WTF moments throughout that speech. Don't look now, but I think Sarah Palin just made a funny at President Obama's expense. That was a little edgy, too. Top Line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern, we're right here bringing you the latest in politics. It's twitter.com slash rickkline, twitter.com slash John Carl. Stay warm and dry with us. John, Capitol Hill still popping today despite the snow. Yeah, you know, and this place is deserted. I mean, this place is the whole city's been shut down, but Top Line is here. And I want to start right, right with uh, WTS. What the Sarah? You heard Sarah Palin's joke. Uh, she's gotten a lot of mileage out of it. Uh, like I said, it, it sounds a little bit uh, a little bit edgy to me, but I've got to tell you, Rick, I think she might have plagiarized you. If you remember earlier this week on Top Line, I believe it was Tuesday, we brought up the winning the future comment and take a look at this. Uh, strange, I think, is a good way to, to describe it, certainly. Uh, no one has a stranglehold on what the future means, and uh, I think we can all say WTF as a result of, uh, of all of that. <laughs> So there you go, Rick. I, I hope you get credit uh, from Sarah Palin. Well, this clearly shows that Sarah Palin is watching the program. I think uh, I, I should note that uh, this particular phrase came a, by, from a longtime and, and loyal friend of the program who insists on remaining anonymous. Next up today, it is T43. There are exactly three members of the new Senate Tea Party Caucus, and it sounds like uh, they might as well just enjoy their Earl Grey over at the local Starbucks because the only people who are joining are Senators Rand Paul, Senator Mike Lee, and the only current, the only person who was in the Senate before this past year, Senator Jim DeMint. You know, we talked so much about the junior DeMints on this program and elsewhere about the, the, this new Tea Party Caucus that we could expect. But uh, the fact that they've only got three, I think, exposes the real power. They could have had more, of course, but uh, a lot of their folks ended up losing in the general election. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they could have had a, they could have had O'Donnell, they could have had Sharon Angle, they could have had Ken Buck, all the junior demands, but uh, they won't have that chance. But look who wasn't there. No Marco Rubio. Mm. You could argue the original Tea Partier uh, of the last cycle. He wasn't there, not Ron Johnson in Wisconsin. So, so we'll see what happens. But next up, my favorite story of the week, Dennis the Menace. Dennis Kucinich, a friend of the program, we learned yesterday, filed a lawsuit in D.C. Superior Court against the cafeteria here in the Capitol, uh, saying that he bit into a sandwich wrap that was supposed to have pitted olives. But amazingly, Rick, it actually had an unpitted olive, did some damage to his teeth. He says this was back in 2008. We knew nothing of it until he filed this lawsuit yesterday. And he, 150 and he claims, grand is what he wants, by the way. He, he, claims, in the lawsuit, he claims in the lawsuit that, the, that this making the rap, quote, unwholesome and unfit for human <laughs> consumption. Two relevant facts about Dennis Kucinich. One is he's a vegetarian, so he is familiar <laughs> with pitted olives as well as uh, olives that still have their pits in them. And the second is he is a litigious fellow. He actually sued ABC News back in 2008 for not allowing him into one of the debates. He lost that lawsuit. We'll see how this one turns out. And finally today, it's Angle's options. What do you do if you lose a Senate race in Nevada? Of course, you travel to <laughs> Iowa. And then you be, you're purposely vague when you're asked whether you might have presidential ambitions. This is what uh, our good friend Sharon Angle said just yesterday. Quote, I'll just say I have lots of options for the future. I'm investigating all my options. That means she's not ruling out a run for the presidency, John. Wow, I'm amazed. And all I can say, Rick, is, uh, you know, as you know, Sharon Angle was on our program uh, more than once during the course of the campaign, exclusive interviews. I, the only thing I say is that if she is going to run for president, I want it to be declared on top line. Come that back is that, right here. That is, that is absolutely it. Now, right now, we are joined by David Cicilline, congressman from the mighty state of Rhode Island. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. We want Thank to get to the, to the big substantive issues of the day, but I've got one I just got to get right to right away. Uh, the Dennis uh, Kucinich story. Have you had a chance to eat in the Longworth cafeteria? <laughs> Have you ever encountered uh, an unpitted olive? I have not, but I will be looking carefully uh, in light of that, but I have not. So you haven't had a chance to eat in the cafeteria? No, I've had a chance to eat. I haven't had a problem with an olive. How, how did you <laughs> I'm find... Italian. We don't have problems with olives. <laughs> how, how, how did you find the food? I mean, what, what do you make of this? A member of Congress uh, uh, suing Congress. Um, I, I found the food great, and the people there are great, and I'm delighted to be here. All right, all right. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a freshman Democrat in this Congress. There aren't very many of you. Is it, the, is it, is it lonesome? You having trouble getting people to, to sit with you at lunch? What's it feel like? No, I mean, there are nine new Democrats, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be one of them. And they are terrific people. And, you know, we recognize, I think we all recognize, look, we were sent here 
to get things done on behalf of the American people. Uh, we know we're a small group of freshman class. So we have 87 new Republicans. So if we're going to get things done, we've got to figure out a way to work together. And I think all of us recognize that. I was a mayor of a city. When you're the mayor of a city, you know, you don't have Republican or Democratic potholes or trees that need to be trimmed or schools that need to be fixed. You just have to solve problems and get things done. And so I've made an effort, as have all of my colleagues, to really get to know each other, people on both sides of the aisle, so we can develop relationships that will make us more productive for our constituents and for this country. So, um, you know, what's been nice about nine, only nine people is we've gotten to know each other really well in our orientation, our training, but we also have recognized that we've got to work with people who got elected on the other side of the aisle and find answers, not Republican or Democratic answers, but answers that are right for our country. And so uh, it's been a great uh, first three weeks. So uh, the, the president uh, clearly lent a hand out at least a bit in his speech to Republicans, uh, especially on the issue of, of saying Social Security needs to be needs to be fixed, uh, mentioning uh, 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 Medicare costs and controlling the growth of entitlements. Are you going to be there to go along uh, with that, if, even if it means uh, a situation where the growth in Medicare and Social Security has to be has to be cut? Look, I, I think the president made exactly the right point, that we have got to do two things. We've got to reduce spending and deal with the deficit, and we also have to protect the investments that are necessary to assure the long-term economic prosperity of our country. Okay, but you have to do both things, and so it has to be smart. Okay, but, 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 but I'm asking about entitlements, because this, this is, I mean, the president made it very clear, you cannot fix the budget problem unless you're willing to go, and this means cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Well, I think what you have to do first is you have to look at things like oil and gas subsidies. We've got to end our involvement in Afghanistan. We're spending $5 billion a month in Afghanistan. Uh, we'll spend over a trillion dollars by the time we're done in that war. So you, uh, there are places that we have to look first. Farm subsidies, oil and gas subsidies, uh, ending our involvement in Afghanistan in a responsible way. Those are huge expenditures. And so I think the president also said last night, you don't go to the most vulnerable populations first. And so I think we have a responsibility, obviously, to look at all of these issues, but we have to focus first on some of the easy stuff, some of the places where we should, we can make cuts quickly. Um, but we have to do it again at the same time that we're making investments that are necessary. They're, it's not just good, but those are necessary to the long-term economic prosperity of this country. Education, innovation, infrastructure, so we can compete in the global economy. But um, there's going to be a lot of discussion. We had some reports from bipartisan commissions that uh, present a whole range of possibilities. I think we have a lot of hard work to do. It's going to require all of us to work together and find common ground to fix this. I think everyone recognizes this is serious, and we have to do it in a way which supports the continued progress of our economy and doesn't uh, send us back. And, and I think that's going to be the challenge. Yes. Congressman, as you know, there are a few states that have been hit as hard by this, uh, this economic downturn as your home state of Rhode Island. Do you need to see major new investments from the federal government? Do we need another stimulus? Do you need to see a big package of spending that is targeted to job creation? What, what I think we need to do is, I think what we need to do is do what the president said. We need to understand that we need to invest in education so our kids can compete. We need to rebuild this country, our roads, our bridges, our technology infrastructure, our information infrastructure, so we can compete for her jobs in the 21st century. And we have to out innovate. You know, we have to continue to invest in science and research. Those are the jobs uh, of the 21st century. So I think there are things that we have to do. Um, we need to be sure that we're making it easier for businesses to cut through red tape. We have to make sure that the regulatory process is streamlined for our businesses, that they have access to capital, that the workforce is trained. We have to have trade policies that give American businesses a fighting chance to compete in the global economy so we can make things again in America and keep jobs here. So um, we've certainly benefited by the investment from the federal government, the stimulus. It's helped small businesses. It's helped to create jobs. It's helped to repair our infrastructure. But recognizing the challenges we face as a national government and the deficit, um, we have to be sure we're doing it really right. smartly and investing in the right things. All right, Congressman Dave Cicilline, Rhode Island, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me. First appearance very, very on Top quickly, Line, we'll have you back. Hopefully not my last. Thanks. If, as, right. a, as a former mayor, any advice to all the mayors that need to get those roads No, plowed? it's been nice to have a snowstorm where it wasn't my responsibility <laughs> to clean it up. <laughs> right. Fair Beautiful. enough. Thanks so much.